our first guest from his nine-time Emmy-nominated work on Better Call Saul. Now he makes an unexpected leap to action movie star in the number one movie in the country, Nobody. What are you still doing here, old man? I'm gonna f you up. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got it. Nobody is in theaters now. Please welcome Bob Odenkirk. Get to that. 81% on the Rotten Tomato. Yeah, you It seems like it seems like you've been in an accident. Yeah, but Jimmy, you're number one. Ow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You let, said me just, that, let me just put that back in the socket. Mentioned number one a few times, but why are you all banged up? You're actually <sighs> bleeding right now. Did you see the movie? Yeah, I saw the movie. Well, I got knocked around. Yeah, in the movie, but what happened to your arm and your face? Yeah, well, I, I broke a bone, and I got a concussion in the front of my head, and I got two in the back. Uh, I, in the movie? I, I got a kidney out, and I lost, I thought I lost my pelvis. I wasn't using it. And uh, a couple teeth. This is during but, the shooting of the film? Yeah, Jimmy, it was real hard, and... It looks like it was hard. It looks like you... I did, it, all, I did all my own fighting. Yeah, I... That's you know, the old way, right? Yeah. <laughs> that is the way. A lot of people would have a stuntman do the fighting part. A what? A stuntman. A lot of people would have a stunt guy. A, a stunt who? Like a professional stuntman will come in and he would do the fighting part, and even on the other end with the guys, you know, uh, they would be stuntmen as well. Why? Yeah. <laughs> Let's... You know, you're not familiar with stuntmen? I forgot. You that... forgot? Do, do you ever see the show The Fall Guy starring Lee Majors? I loved it. You know, and what his job was, he was oh, a stuntman back then, yeah. Right, you could have right. had one of him. And instead, you've suffered consequences, it looks no, I... like. Well, on screen, it looked yeah, really I great. Ass kicked, Jimmy. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never walk the same again. <laughs> it doesn't... Yeah, you are really a mess. <laughs> you are a terrible mess. <laughs> it's actually disturbing. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh while you're... You... Pretend will crying, you... but, yeah, it's, um... <laughs> are you okay? I got beat up so bad. Yeah. They were real people. It was real fighting. They told me I had to do it. They told me I had to do it. Those guys in the bus were just guys they were in the... real people, Jimmy. Oh, my God. <laughs> well... Because I don't believe in that CGI crap. <laughs> it's, it's... Nobody likes... Nobody... Nobody likes CGI. Say it with me. Nobody oh, likes CGI! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it uh, looks like your, your CGI is black, is what it is, yeah. <laughs> Will you be my agent? <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> I would be honored to be your agent if we can drop this bit. We can drop the we're bit. We're starting to feel, yes, but uh, we're beautifully done. Thank I you. see another Emmy nomination. <laughs> <laughs> you still. Yeah. <laughs> It's all funny, but it, next, when we go to a commercial and come back and make no mention of the fact that yeah, your yeah, face yeah. is beaten, Oh, no, I love this. Disturbed. I want to get this makeup every time. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think it looks great. It <laughs> would be a great running gag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, I thought you were fantastic in this movie. Thank and you, I, I was wondering, I was like, I was wondering how this happened because it is a really good action movie. Oh, good. And obviously you're, you know, this is surprising to see you in this particular role. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking like, maybe they went to like some of these action guys, yeah. maybe they went to Tom Cruise and he's like, no, I'm not gonna do this, maybe, we'll to, you know, whatever. <laughs> it and just then, got handed down And then the somebody years. thought, I know what would yeah. be funny yeah. if Bob Odenkirk played this role. Yeah. But that's not how it happened at all. No, no, I, uh... I, I play Jimmy McGill uh, on Better Call Saul. Yeah. And, and uh, after the second season, you know, it plays in Europe, plays around the world. And then my brother-in-law, Luke, sent me a screen grab of an ad for it in China. And I thought, wow, they're watching me play this character in China. And I wonder what I could do in, in features that could play around the world and action plays around the world. And I thought, you know, I'm, I'm in okay shape, despite how I look. I can hold the makeup, it stays on my face. And uh, I could, if I could train, I could do, I could play that part. I thought I had it in me. So I passed the idea around and Derek Colstead, who wrote the John Wick films, loved the notion of me as just a regular dad who gets through circumstance embroiled in a, in a big fight that uh, is a great big cinematic story of, of one man against the Russian mob. And, uh, and he wrote it, and it was beautiful. And Ilya Nyshul is this great Russian director who directed a movie called Hardcore Henry. Uh, loved it and wanted to direct it. And uh, we just had an incredible team, and I, I trained for two and a half years. You trained, did you start training before you actually oh. sold this movie? Yeah, well luckily it takes so long for a movie to get made in Hollywood. Uh -huh. <laughs> that you could become anything by the time. <laughs> You want to be a tightrope walker or anything, you know, a violinist, you got plenty of time to learn. It was uh, great to see you in this movie. It was also great to see Christopher Lloyd, who plays your dad yeah, in the movie. Yeah. He looked like he was having the best time ever. He, he was giddy. He, of course, is Doc Brown time. from Back to the Future, yeah. Jim from Taxi. You know, you, yeah. yeah it's, it's, Christopher Lloyd, RZA, Connie Nielsen, an amazing crew around me, amazing actors, but... But Chris Lloyd has never been in an action movie. He's been in so many classic films, and he's such a sweet guy, and I wasn't sure how he'd feel, but he was absolutely giddy about pretending to shoot off shotguns. And in fact, they, they told him, at one point his character has like six shotguns around his neck, all dangling. <laughs> and they said, hey man, we'll build some really light shotguns. Shotguns are kind of heavy if you get six of them around your neck. And he says, no, no, no. I need real shotguns. <laughs> It'll look fake. So he's wearing real shotguns. <laughs> and and uh, yeah. and Riza is an amazing guy who's done this and knows these movies and brought the best spirit to the film. It was an amazingly, it was the bloodiest, most violent film made with the most love ever. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it really, uh, yeah, like it's like a surgery or something. Yeah, it's really, it really came out great. Well, we're gonna talk about more uh, with Bob Odenkirk. We'll be right back. His movie is called Nobody. We are back with Bob Odenkirk. His movie is called Nobody. Uh, we're just talking about, I mean, how much fun it is. How has your year been overall? I know you did the training for the, this film, but then you got stuck in the house. Yeah, right? we finished right before the pandemic uh, hit, and I was stuck in the house. But my son Nathan, who worked on your show, yeah. Thank you for that. He Great loved kid, working yeah. here. Uh, Very he smart home. kid. Yeah, and he was home, and uh, and my daughter Erin was home from her college. They were all online, and we uh, we did projects together. It was really great to yeah, have that time with Tell me about this them. book that you guys wrote. Yeah, well, I wrote a book with my kids when they were little. It's little rhymes that are super silly, and I always thought one day I might rewrite them and make them good if I could. How old were they when they did this? They were two, yeah. three, and they would write some too. We'd write silly rhymes. And I kept it and I thought, this is our chance. So I made them come out of their rooms. <laughs> and I said, we're, we're gonna rewrite these poems. And, and I wrote a bunch and Aaron did the illustrations. Can I share one Your with daughter, you? Your daughter, these illustrations are terrific, yeah, by this, the way. I looked through this and- Let uh, me just share this with you. Uh, yes, please this do. This one's called A Cat Named Larry. A cat named Larry had a mouse he carried around with him as a pet. His dad said, chase it, don't just carry it, you'll waste it. But he loved that mouse so very, very much. 
Cats live longer than mice do, it seems. Now Larry only sees his friend in his kitty cat dreams, where they chase each other round, never catching. That's okay. It's the good feelings that remain at the end of the day. Oh, this is a real Odenkirk family project. It, it was an Odenkirk family project, and uh, we made good use of our pandemic time. It got a little long at the end. Okay. <laughs> the, um... You posted a picture getting a vaccination with some of your castmates yeah, on uh, a Better Call Saul. And uh, wh why did you get it all together? Well, Stephen Michael Quezada, who's on the left side of right. that frame, who plays Gomi in Breaking Bad and in Better Call Saul, is kind of a community leader down there in New Mexico and Albuquerque. And he has passed on the vaccine three times so that frontline workers can get it, even though his number came up. And Ray and I have been signed up for about two and a half months now because we knew we were heading down there. So our numbers came up, and we were talking to Stephen, and we said, let's get it together. And Stephen arranged for us to get it. So Stephen Michael Quezada is the leader of this group, and we all got the vaccine and feel great, and we hope everyone in New Mexico and Albuquerque will also join us. It's a great system down there. Just sign up and get the vaccine, and let's protect each other. You, um... You guys, how many... You are shooting the show, obviously. Yeah. And I'm sure you're taking all these safety precautions. Sure. How many episodes in are you so far? One. One episode in. Do you know, has Vince Gilligan, the creator of the show, informed you what of what Saul's fate will be, of what he, Jimmy's fate will he be? He has not. I don't know what's going to happen. I like being surprised. I kind of enjoy it, just like an audience member, where this story goes. It's always surprising. And You say you like being surprised. Yeah. If you asked him to tell you... Oh, he would. He would tell oh, you. Oh, yeah. He will try, they try to tell me, and I go, shut up. Oh, I see. <laughs> I don't want to know. I'm a, I'm a producer on the show. I don't oh. know what's happening. <laughs> uh, but it, it's perfectly fine with me. I, I, I prefer to find out and be surprised. By the way, when does the book come out and what is it called? Uh, what this book is called Zillit. Oh. And I don't know when it comes out. We okay, all right. Well, that's a heck of a yet. plug. But you yeah. know what? You've been through a lot. <laughs> You've been through a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, um, next time I see you, I hope you won't be bleeding. Uh, yes. Bob Odenkirk, uh, nobody is his movie. It is in theater. It's the number one movie in the country. We'll be right back with Nicole Byer. If you like that video, click subscribe and we'll be together until one of us dies.